Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today to be joined by Dr. Carolyn Bucky. She is a COVID-19 expert and an epidemiologist at Harvard. And we are so lucky to have her here today and we're talking about something very important, masks, COVID-19 and masks. I want to start off by just talking to you about the science behind wearing a mask because there's so much debate right now. So I think the most important thing for people to know is that there's no evidence at all that masks are harmful. They don't lead to car dangerous carbon dioxide buildup or anything like that. And so we now have quite a few lines of evidence that tell us that wearing masks really does impact transmission of the coronavirus and really can save lives. Even surgical masks and cloth masks can have an impact on how far you spread virus to other people. So it's a really important part of, of protecting our communities and, and protecting vulnerable people from this virus. That's what I was gonna ask you about because I have like the surgical masks, I have masks that are made of, I mean, we have all different types of fabrics. Yeah, all the masks are going to provide some kind of reduction in the amount of droplets that you're putting out when you talk or when you cough and so on. Of course, it does depend on how you wear it. So you have to wear the mask properly. It has to cover your nose and your mouth. And it's kind of common sense, right? We know that coughs and sneezes spread diseases, and this is how this virus is spreading. And now the data is really telling us that it is effective at, at preventing transmission. Bandanas. Uh, were not as effective as the cloth masks and the surgical masks. Probably because, you know, those bandanas have gaps underneath and, and they, you know, the, the virus can escape. Right. So you really wanted to be able to cover completely like around. I have a question for you. I read somewhere where they were saying that if you put the mask down below your chin, you're basically exposing your mask to germs when you bring it back up. Like, isn't it best to kind of take it off? To one side, I don't know. Yeah, you want to minimize both removing the mask and putting it on multiple times to stop that, as well as kind of pushing it down so that virus can get on different parts of the mask. And then when you put it back up, you can breathe the virus particles in. But again, it's, it's really about common sense and, and trying to make sure that we are protecting the safety of the whole community. I'm going to embarrass myself because I actually have a mask that I wore on set the other day, and that's what the inside looks like because I had makeup on. How often should we be washing our masks? For cloth masks and that kind of thing, I think it's best to wash them frequently, hand wash frequently, maintain social distancing. It's important to remember that you still need to keep that distance between people, even if you're wearing your mask. And that's because the masks aren't completely stopping all virus coming out. So, you know, you still want to be far away from people because uh, virus particles could come out of the side or if you're not quite wearing it correctly and so on. Why are masks effective in protecting ourselves from the coronavirus? For masks, the, one of the most important things is protecting the people around us. So the idea is if we're all wearing a mask, then the people who are infectious and they don't know it because they don't have symptoms, they won't be spreading the virus to you and you won't be spreading it to others if you are infectious. And so that's why, you know, these masks with the valves on? Yeah. Those aren't good because they do protect you from inhalation, but they, they don't protect others from your exhalation. So because we're wearing masks to try and prevent infectious people from breathing on each other, those masks actually don't protect others because you can breathe out the virus through those valves. How safe are you if you're wearing a mask and you're around somebody that isn't wearing a mask? Should we be like distancing ourselves even more than the six feet if we see somebody that doesn't have a mask? I would. These plumes of droplets can travel quite far and, and it's just safer to stay away if somebody's not wearing a mask. It's not just how close you are, it's how long you are next to that person. If somebody zooms past you on a bike, even if they're not wearing a mask, there's not that much time for viral particles to travel between you. What's really problematic is if you're spending extended periods of time with somebody who's not wearing a mask. And so the viral particles can kind of build up. So I have a question for you, Dr. Bucky, about the face shield. We think that you can become infected through the mucosal membranes in your eyes. So the face shields provide you with an extra layer of protection because they prevent that route of transmission. And they're just another protective layer between you and the virus. Oh my God, this changes everything for me. It's probably not the dominant route of transmission, but yeah. it, is, it is one factor. God, are we all going to be in hazmat suits by December? <laughs> I don't think so. 
widespread compliance to, to mask wearing policies really does have an impact on community transmission. I don't think we need to go to hazmat suits. I think if we just get people to understand that wearing their mask is an important kind of community service to protect everyone, that's kind of the goal. So tell me, is there any situation when we're outside of our homes that it's okay to not wear a mask? If you go for a walk and, or you're in the wilderness and you're hiking and there's nobody around, then of course there's nobody at risk and, and you don't need to wear your mask. I see the beaches of, of Malibu and Santa Monica are packed on the weekends and I don't see a ton of people wearing masks. Is that something that is, is dangerous? I think it's problematic. They are helped by the fact that they're outside, but I still think that if you're going to be like in close proximity to other people, it would be smart to be wearing a mask. Dr. Bucky, I have to ask you about just being like in an enclosed space and being indoors. Talk to me about like the best ways to really protect yourself when you're like on an airplane. Airplanes have a pretty good air filtration system. And so the air itself is not going to be the problem, but you're, you have the same issue that you have in other indoor spaces, which is if people are very close to each other and they're breathing on each other, um, then you have issues. So it's partly on the airlines to make sure that they are not, you know, packing airplanes really tight. The things that you can do, it really comes down to keeping that mask on, washing your hands, not taking the mask on an awful lot. Can I ask you how dangerous is like getting an Airbnb? We have gone to an Airbnb and we know that they're taking extra precautions to give a day gap between stays so that they can completely like go through and sterilize the house. Um, can- <laughs> So actually, the science has changed on that. At the beginning of this year, we were very concerned about fomite transmission. That's like viral particles that are on surfaces. And what we think now is that it actually doesn't contribute a huge amount. So for sure, hand washing and being careful. Surfaces isn't as dangerous as we once thought. Yeah. If the owner of the Airbnb is, is safe, and they are leaving time between when they come in and clean and when you enter the building. I think that's a relatively safe way for people to take vacations. So I wanted to know your thoughts on where can we go to try to get like up to date news on COVID-19? There are a number of places you can look and it kind of depends what type of information you want. The CDC website has kind of guidelines and frequently asked questions, and you can take a look at that. There's an organization called CIDRAP, C-I-D-R-A-P, and they put out really useful articles. For more scientific kind of literature, Johns Hopkins University has started to kind of summarize and aggregate the science um, on a regular basis, so you can keep track of that. Okay, so I have a couple of like myths that I'd love for you to kind of bust for us around masks and social distancing. Somebody said wearing a mask can cause hypercapnia and lead viruses to travel into the brain. No, I think that's just straight wrong. Wearing your mask is not dangerous in any way, and there's certainly um, no evidence that it's going to cause pathogenesis from viruses traveling differently than normal or anything like that. Another one I saw was wearing a mask can lower your oxygen levels, which can cause other health issues. There's also no evidence that if you're, you're wearing a mask that your oxygen saturation does drop. And you know, you can just think about all the healthcare workers that are wearing these masks for many, many hours during their shifts. You don't need to be social distancing if you're wearing a mask and you don't need to wear a mask if you're social distancing. The thing about social distancing is, you know, we use this six feet distance, but that's somewhat arbitrary. Mm. Droplets travel variable distances when we are speaking or we're coughing and so on. But given that transmission can occur, there is the risk of transmission um, even, you know, across Larger distances sometimes, you know, these things aren't completely hard and fast, these rules. A mask plus social distancing is the most safe. And that's because the masks aren't completely stopping all virus coming out. So you still want to be far away from people because uh, virus particles could come out of the side or if you're not quite wearing it correctly and so on. This has been incredible. I can't believe I have a COVID-19 expert and epidemiologist from Harvard on my YouTube channel. This is incredible. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Thank you, Dr. Carolyn Bucky. And hopefully we will be talking about something different in six months from now. I'm putting it. I hope so. All right. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you like and subscribe.